Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Stuart Palmer. I'm going to be doing the webinar this afternoon on InTouch versus System Platform. Just to introduce myself, I'm one of the systems architects at Wonderware UK and Ireland, uh, and I'm part of the pre-sales support team. So what we're going to discuss today is InTouch and System Platform. We're going to look at the concepts of tag-based versus object-based design. We'll look at the solutions that Wonderware have in relation to those offerings. So we'll look at InTouch 2017 and System Platform 2017 and the different clients that we visualize our applications uh, via. So if I start with a brief introduction to InTouch and System Platform, just for those who don't know what those products are. So InTouch was the first Windows-based HMI. It was introduced in the mid 1980s and was uh, and was the first HMI SCADA to be Windows based and there was great collaboration between Windows and Wonderware to get the to get the concept off the ground and this concept was really put in place to to negate the control systems that were already there and the, the hardwired and implementations that took a lot of maintenance and design change was not easy. So this is what InTouch was introduced to, to alleviate some of those problems that were, that were um, acquired or present in the, in the control systems in, in those days. InTouch is renowned for its ease of use and the ability to migrate from legacy or older versions of the applications. I wonder where I spend a lot of their budget on ensuring that those logical and seamless upgrades and uh, migrations can happen. There is unsurpassed connectivity to equipment or devices. So Wonderware have a large suite of device drivers that enable connection to your plant equipment. And we also have software partners who we work with who can provide connections and device drivers for the more obscure devices that are out there. System Platform is our real-time industrial platform, so it's more of an operating system platform for your industrial applications. So System Platform is a suite of products uh, which include Historian for historical logging capabilities, Application Server to run your, your objects in our object structure, and, uh, and provide the engine for our application. And InTouch for System Platform and InTouch OMI are the clients that connect to those applications for our visualization. So Wonderware System Plat Platform manages complexity and variability found across our plant network and provides us the ability to add automation standards to our, to our object template and our object design. The concept of System Platform is really based around the plant model and it provides a standard layer that encapsulates uh, needed variations in connectivity, alarming, and the user interface. Its engineering tools allow for management of plant models for multiple sites, and that maximizes the reuse and standardization of your object templates and your object library. As well as being the industrial platform, you can add modular software on top of system platform, so we can bolt on things like MES operations, quality, performance, uh, batching applications such as InBatch and Recipe Manager. We can also put on there things like Wonderware Intelligence for analytics purposes. And we do have a connector called Enterprise Integrator. If you need to integrate your automation layer into your IT layer, so we can integrate into Microsoft Dynamics or your SAP systems at the corporate layer. So let's have a look in general then at tag-based and object-based design. 
So first, let's let's explore tag-based solutions. So from the inception of PC-based HMI and supervisory products, the development of data access, scripting, alarming, and data analysis has been based on the concept of tags. And although this approach can be simple, uh, can be simple and portable from one pro project to another, a tag-based environment does use a flat namespace, which can be a shortcoming because individual elements can't be linked or organized into a more intelligent structure with built-in relationships and interdependencies. Global changes to a tag database are typically done externally to the development environment. So you, you use external tools like a text file editor or Microsoft Excel, and then you import that back into your application. The reuse in a tag-based system is commonly set up through dynamic or client server referencing. The system creates a, a common graphic and that contains scripts that switch the tags at runtime. Because the application structure is flat, the user then needs to change each tag in the system and analyze how that change affects the rest of the application. So let's look next at object-based design. So the concept of object-based development originated from the IT world. Its goal was to provide tools that would release the developer from mundane, repetitive programming tasks, while at the same time maximizing the reuse of the developed common components. As you might expect, these tools are not an exact fit for an industrial environment. For one thing, systems integrators and production engineers are not typically computer programmers. Furthermore, there are some key architectural differences between IT and automation systems. For example, in such applications typically involve accessing databases from non-deterministic type data sources. So they're looking more to provide information from business reporting or financial reporting and online banking type solutions. Whereas on the other hand, Plant intelligent production management or supervisory control applications involve acquiring real-time data from PLCs, performing calculations on that data and determining flows, production numbers, and such things. And then display that data in real-time in graphics. The two environments are different enough to dictate that common the object-based tools for the automation side of the uh, production are needed. So the object-based approach offered by Wonderware and its underlying orchestra software architecture is designed for industrial customers who develop and manage uh, supervisory systems. So templates are created to represent equipment or devices on the present, uh, present on the plant. Templates contain all the device configuration, scripting, inputs, outputs, security, alarms, and events. And we'll look at that in more detail when we come to look at the system platform solution. These templates can be configured with options and choices in order to deliver a simpler way to create configuration variation and visual representations of the equipment or devices that are at the, at the device layer. So let's compare the solutions. So as far as development is concerned, in our tag-based solution, we create a set of tags for our, our device or our piece of equipment. Now, in this case, we're going to use a valve as our template or as our example. So we have to create I.O. tags, memory tags, animations, alarms, history, and security around that graphic. And for every instance of that graphic that we display in our application, we need to create the same set of tags for each. Now, in system platform, what we have is a template-based system. So we create a template, and that template contains all our configuration. So our I.O., our memory tags, any animations or symbols that are part of that 
object. Alarms and history is configured there and security is, is added as part of your object structure. What we then do is we instantize those templates and they become our runtime objects. Those objects are deployed from our central location and they run and acquire the data as required. So if we needed to go back and modify any of our data or our applications, then in our tag-based solution, we have to go back and modify the various files adding functionality or extra condition monitoring or whatever it might be that you want to add to that valve. Now, if you had to do that same change for all the valves in the system, then you do have to change the tags. Although the graphics now in the newer versions of InTouch, you can use them as objects, so they can be templatized in a way, but we still have to go back and, and change tags or update tags to introduce new functionality. In System Platform, we edit our template, add in the required functionality, and then we propagate that change throughout the instances of our already designed model, of our plant model. So it allows for a speedier uh, deployment of functionality to the system. So let's look at the model in comparison. So in a tag-based solution, you have a flat namespace. And in our system platform object-based solution, we have a plant model. And that plant model is at the center of our, our application. So let's have a look at, or do a comparison between the application types. So as far as development goes, our graphics development in our object-based solution, the graphics are created last. So we create our template structures, we create the instances of those structures, and then we create the graphics to display that data at runtime. With a tag-based solution, we create that graphic first, and then we add the functionality required around the graphic, connecting tags and connecting those tags to our I.O. in the PLC. As far as scripting goes, the scripting is developed inside of your object templates as part of your device component. In a tag-based architecture, that is developed separately in a scripting environment, and then you link the scripts to a graphical representation or animation to display that at runtime. That allows us to strictly enforce standards at a object-based layer, um, whereas in a tag-based architecture, it, it's much harder to uh, enforce strict rules around your standards. Although the Orchestra Symbols being available now in InTouch does allow for some standardization. Global changes to the application become different between the two architectures as well. So in our object-based design, changes are propagated from our templates down to our the instances of our runtime objects. So those components can be distributed uh, and then exchanged or enhanced um, when in relation to the functionality that we're adding. As a tag architecture is based on graphics uh, or changed using tools like Excel, there is a requirement to do a recompilation of the application and redeploy the full application before, before it goes um, before it goes live with the new functionality. So let's explore the Wonderware offerings in relation to tag-based and object-based architectures and applications. So Wonderware provides InTouch and system platform in relation to tag and object-based solutions. So InTouch can cover a wide range of 
functionality and there is different functionality that can be offered out of the box by InTouch and System Platform. So the greater the requirement for functionality depends on which solution we need to choose and which SCADA solution we need to implement in order to achieve what we require. So we're going to look at InTouch and System Platform in relation to in, in relation to those tag and object based solutions. So let's first look at InTouch 2017. Touch HMI software continues to deliver us uh, business value and helps us to maximize our performance, increase our agility, lower our costs, and makes make sure we can stay secure and risk free. InTouch has been around for a long time, as we mentioned earlier on. Uh, it's been around for 30 years. Throughout that time, it's had many iterations and many versions, having enhanced functionality and new functionality introduced at each version. And that brings us up to date with 2017, where we have new functionality brought into the applications. So InTouch 2017 is Wonderware's tag-based solution. It uses the familiar development and runtime tools that have been in since the inception of InTouch 30 years ago. So it uses Window Maker and Window Viewer for the development and runtime tools. There are different types of InTouch applications that can be created for, that can be created. These are classic, modern, and managed applications. The classic application uses the very familiar window maker and window viewer tools with the raster based graphics. A modern in touch application uses the same tools in the same way as the classic application. However, this incorporates some of the orchestra technology and therefore vector based graphics and templated graphic design can be used. Modern in touch applications are published and managed in the same way as classic applications. For distributed applications, the NAD functionality is used or network application development or a manual copy process is required. The managed in touch application is created and managed in the orchestra IDE and uses a template runtime instance model. It uses the same development tools as the other two applications with integration into the IDE for access to the orchestra symbols and to allow central management and the deployment of InTouch applications. New application templates allow, <coughs> excuse me, are supported in modern and managed InTouch applications and provide an application framework for you to build upon. Further details on that can be found in Andrew Graham's webinar from last month if you want to download it and visualize that. There are new frame type windows. The new frame type windows are supported in modern and managed applications as they require orchestra symbols for the interaction to work. The zoom level can be exposed when using pinch and zoom technology and thus allowing you to clutter or declutter and that's the process of hiding or showing different levels of detail on your display or on your window based on the zoom level and the zoom levels that you've configured. There is also the enhanced script editor, which incorporates autocomplete, color coded syntax, and line numbering. So let's have a look at architecture examples. So let's first have a look at uh, in touch peer to peer architecture. So, in this architecture, we have a number of in touch nodes. We could have one or multiple of those acquiring the data from our PLC. Um, you can link a standalone in touch application into other Wonderware applications, such as Historian in this architecture, which is used for the historical functionality and retrieval of the data from InTouch. So let's look at 
in touch in a client server type architecture. So in this architecture, we've got two in touch nodes, um, one primary and one secondary or a redundant server, and they're based on a tag server concept. So we would have an application running in the console session or on the server itself if we're using RDS or non-RDS environments. And our client machines would gather data from that tag server. If there was a failure, then the application or data acquisition, uh, alarming, historical login would switch to tag server 2. However, that's not built-in functionality, not completely built-in functionality. What we need to do is have some kind of scripting or engineered solution in the background that does that for us. We can use a tag server concept in a terminal services environment or RDS environment, and we can use third-party software such as Thin Manager to allow us management of that environment. So the typical steps for creating a tag-based application. So a new HMI application is created on a single computer. Windows or displays or mimics are created for that application. Graphics are then developed for each of the windows and displays. Tag definitions can be imported from a PLC or you can manually configure them in the tag dictionary as, as, as and when needed. Alarm and event detection scripts are defined for each of your tags or your tags are extended to allow alarm and event detection. Tags are linked to graphic elements and then the graphical animation scripts or links are created. IO tags are defined and linked to the application itself. If the application is to be deployed in a client server type environment, the application is architected to centralize alarming, event detection, historical archiving, graphics, and I.O. servers, as we saw in the previous architecture. Changes to the system require a shutdown of the application, make the changes to scripts and tag database references to enable new functionality. And then we need to reload the new HMI application on each of our workstations. So that's the concept of tag-based applications. Let's next look at system platform and how we use that in relation to object-oriented design. So system platform, as we've already discussed, is a single platform for SCADA, for supervisory HMI, MES, and EMI software solutions. It provides um, providing the needs or fulfilling the needs of industrial automation and information personnel. At the center of system platform is the plant model, which is a, represent, a logical representation of the, of the processes or the control system being supervised. Archestra object technology makes configuring, logging, delivery and maintenance of the real time and historical information point and click simple. System platform has been around for a number of years, so similar to, uh, to InTouch, it's an established product. It has undergone many transformations throughout that time, and um, the biggest transformation being in 2017 with the new release of the InTouch OMI client, which we'll talk about later on. So let's look at how we build the plant model. So if we take this water treatment center, for example, what we have are a multitude of assets in that plant. Now that plant can be divided into different areas and those areas into sub-areas. Our assets are then assigned to those areas and object templates and runtime instances of those objects are created. You can create more complex structures such as a mixer which might have varying different inputs and outputs, it might have an agitator, and it might have a level and a temperature control. So we can make more complex structures and, uh, and use those as devices or objects. 
and there's a representation of the the model based on the, the drawing that we see. So you can see that we've got areas and sub areas and those contain objects. And within that structure you can see more complex objects. So there is objects that contain other objects to form a more complex structure. So let's look at how we deploy our applications in System Platform. So at the center of the of the application is the Galaxy repository. And that's a server that holds all the configuration information for our development environment and for our runtime environment. It holds all the links to our plant model and our devices that are part of that model. What we do is we use a deployment mechanism and we deploy those objects running on an object server. The object server is responsible for data acquisition, for the alarm management, for historization of data, for security. It's responsible for, for the running of the objects, which is different to a tag-based solution where your visualization engine also does the data acquisition, the collection of data, and the alarming structures. With System Platform, we do have built-in redundancy. So in order to configure this, it's just a simple click and select option type configuration. There is no extra license requirement in order to build in redundancy, which gives you greater scope to spread the load of your application or to load balance your application or provide redundancy for your applications. Depending on the size of your application, you can add more pairs or additional pairs of object servers where required. Let's take a look at a typical ar architecture for system platform. So in this slide, what we've got at the bottom are our servers that are providing the data. So we've got our GR node for the configuration and development environments and to hold all our configuration information. We've got a pair of application servers which are doing our data acquisition and our working our uh, alarm management and historization. We do have a historian server and a development server installed in this architecture. There is no reason why you couldn't combine some of those roles. So the GR node and the historian server use a common component. They use SQL Server backend. So we could combine those two into one server. Similar to InTouch, System Platform can be used in a RDS type environment or a terminal services environment and we can have a pair of terminal servers that provide us resilience for our client applications. And that can be thin clients or thick clients or mobile devices or smart devices or any HTML5, uh, any HTML5 compliant browser. Um, you can again use external tools or third-party tools such as Thin Manager to allow for ease of configuration and management of the remote desktop type sessions. So let's look at the 10 steps to creating an object-based application. So the first two are more paper-based and project-orientated um, points. So First, what we need to do is a site survey, and that's to understand the layout of the manufacturing operation or the process, and that allows us to build our plant model. Then we get a list of similar pieces of equipment. So we could look at something like a, a P&I design drawing uh, and get distinct areas of operation um, for segregation of our application and allow us to do further building of our plant model. Once we've identified common naming conventions, um, common equipment, and got an understanding of the process, we can then create object templates and for each of the devices or components in the facility. This process sets up the standards for the supervisory application and for any applications that are created in the future. Device object templates can be contained within each other to create more complex devices as we talked about earlier with the mixer uh, example. 
device object templates have attributes which represent real I.O. available in the PLC or control system. These attributes are then linked to the I.O. through device integration objects. The application can then be assembled by using simple drag and drop capability inside the IDE. Components are then assigned to security groups and the model created in the IDE can now be deployed to, co to the computers that will host the application. Graphics are configured using Wonderware's InTouch HMI and InTouch OMI software. Once the application is developed, system maintenance is easy. Changes made to the object templates can be propagated to the child components. So that's the steps required to, to create our object-based application. What I'm going to show next is a quick video that shows us how we create our template and instance structure and how we add attributes and how we configure those and how we add graphics to that object. So first what I do is I create a, a new template from one of the predefined templates. You can segregate those or separate them into your own library structure and we would recommend that you do that. Um, so you open the, the editor and then you can add attributes. In this case I'm adding uh, I'm using a scale as my example, so I've added an active indicator. I'm extending that with I.O., history, and alarm extensions. I'm just going to change now the alarm state to stopped, as I want the scale to be running all the time. Uh, I'm going to add a second attribute here, which measures the weight for, that's currently on the scale. So you can change the data type, and there are a number of different data types available. Again, you can add configuration options for things like engineering units. You can extend it to uh, you can extend the I/O, and you can have some facility to convert or scale your raw PLC values to fit the scale of your engineering units. History is configured in the same place. You can change the trend uh, parameters as you go, and we can enable things like statistics for our objects so we can get minimum and maximum type values or calculations out of our objects by standard or as standard. Next thing we need to do is add our symbols or our graphics. Now I've done some work up front in relation to these graphics so they do have some configuration in them already. Um, what we do we just select those from our graphic library and embed them into the symbol that's going to belong to the object. And what you'll see in the second graphic that I add shortly is you'll see me change some of the visualization options. So that is based on wizards uh, that are developed in your graphics and you add, add options and choices for your graphics. Now I've changed that to display the object name as its label and to display the uh, alarm border when an alarm is present for that object. So what I'm going to do next is create the runtime versions of those objects. So we just create instances from our templates and in the background I've done some configuration work that means that when I assign my scale objects with the correct naming convention to the correct areas that a I.O. reference is automatically created and I can verify that that works in relation to what my configuration is set before I even deploy those objects which can be useful in testing and commissioning phases. You can do that for one object at a time or you can do multiple selection to verify data access. So there you see that my data is is being acquired from the from the PLC. What I do next is just deploy that application or those objects to the runtime environment. We then can use tools such as Object Viewer in order to visualize that data before we even start to create or animate any graphics. So in relation to creating graphics and visualization, what we're going to look at next is 
the clients for system platform. So we'll look at InTouch for system platform first. So InTouch for system platform provides a visual front end for the system platform applications. It does have some functionality removed because it's not required. So uh, the object servers are responsible for data acquisition, historization, alarms and events. Thus, that functionality to configure those sections is removed and a different license is required in relation to that functionality. Archestra symbols are contained within objects and then embedded into InTouch windows to create the visualization process. Graphics can be embedded directly from the graphics library when required. You know, like for example, when we're creating a custom logon screen or displays that don't really relate to equipment or devices. System platform references are used in place of tags to connect to the I.O. for visualization, and those are held in custom properties within the graphic, and I'll show you where those are configured in the next little video. So in this video, what we see is we open our symbol again, and if we do a right click and select custom properties, you can see that I've got some galaxy references that connect to my active indicator or my active attribute that I set up in my object. So it will display the correct alarm borders and the correct values at runtime. So we open our InTouch for system platform template, and that opens in the the standard InTouch uh, window maker environment. We then use the embed graphic symbol to connect to our graphic library within our Galaxy repository. We connect to the instances of our objects that we want to display data from or we want to visualize in our process. Those graphics are then added to our InTouch windows. You can use the tools that are available in the InTouch window maker environment. So you can use things like the alignment tools, um, distribution tools, text tools, if you want to add quick notes. Um, all those tools are available in the InTouch for system platform uh, application and are there to be used if you need them. So what you'll see me do now is just align those graphics uh, just to neaten them up a bit. So once you've developed your application or you've got your window as required, you can use the uh, fast switch option to switch to runtime. So before we deploy the application, we can actually test and visualize what it will look like on the client end. And there you can see my graphics acquiring data and um, you can see the alarm border on my scale uh, as per the configuration that I set when I chose the wizard options when I embedded it. Okay, so let's look at InTouch OMI next. Now InTouch OMI is the new HMI application for system platform or the new visualization tool for system platform. And with InTouch OMI, what we get are increased engineering efficiencies. So InTouch OMI is resolution independent, so you develop your application once and you can reuse it across a multitude of device resolutions. So we can use it on smartphones, we can use it on tablets, desktops, laptops, multi-display environments without any doing without doing any redesign or rescaling of the applications. There is support for HTML5. Uh, there is support for things like maps and WPF support. So you can use connect to online maps such as Bing and you can use things like GIS overlays on top of your maps. There are two new editors that gain us some engineering efficiencies. So you've got screen profiles and screen layouts and we'll talk about those a little bit later on and what they bring us. 
We've got out of the box content for navigation, dashboarding, and faceplates. We've got IT compliance and IT lifecycle enhancements. So, um, Intich OMI is a clientless install. So, when you deploy your client application, it creates a contained executable, and that contains the code to run your application and the software required to run that application. So there is no maintenance of software at the client end. It can coexist with InTouch. So if you've got InTouch for system platform applications as part of your application at the moment, you can run those side by side. If you wanted to have an interim period while you move to InTouch OMI, uh, while you were testing InTouch OMI, you can do a deployment of both in touch for system platform and in touch OMI to the same machine, and then you can do side by side testing and comparisons of the applications as you uh, as you see fit. There is simplification in the new in touch OMI, so it uses object wizards or an object wizard assembler. So when you create a graphic or add a graphic to a layout or a screen or a pane within your application, it will build you a object in the back end, and we'll see that later on in the video. There is reduced, um, a reduced footprint at runtime, so it allows us for greater performance, and there have been technology updates such as multi-touch, so we can do gesture controls, multi-touch swiping, single touch swipes and, uh, and selections, things like pinch and zoom. It is multi-threaded, so different to our InTouch standalone product and InTouch for system platform, which are single-threaded applications. So it does allow for increased performance of the applications. So InTouch OMI makes it simpler. It's a more approachable solution than we've had before. There are more out-of-the-box content and design built in for us. So using object wizards and symbol wizards, and we can create standardization using the style libraries, and we do have application frameworks to build from. It's more flexible, so using the new uh, profile and layout tools, we can create profiles or profile objects that allow us to do multi-screen environments, um, so control rooms in an L-shaped format, dual screen, single screen. Uh, you can do up to 50 4K monitors in one application. So there is a vast scope for your different screen profiles. Uh, the layout objects, the new layout objects, allow us to carve up that screen resolution in any format that we want. And then we can use the auto build type navigation in, uh, in InTouch OMI. Um, the navigation builds itself around your plant model, and if you've got the correct content selected for the graphics within your within your applications or your objects, then those will be mapped to your panes or the content uh, content type that you selected for each of your panes in your layout application. There is expanded scope, so there are access to applications in context. So we can add things like maps, uh, cameras, um, some of the Wonderware applications like History and Insight and Alarm Advisor. So we can add context to our real-time data. So what we're going to see now is the modification of a graphic within InTouch OMI. So we drag on a new graphic from our existing templates. That then brings us up our wizard options. So we can select those wizard options and configure those as we go. So we configure our new instance, how we want it to look, and how we want it to display that data. And we choose the options for the graphics. 
So we can create, uh, we can tell it what label type it's got, if it's static text, if we're going to display engineering units, uh, and all those different types of configurations that we've got in it, uh, available in our graphic. So then we see our graphic created with the, the symbol wizard options that we selected during the during the process. What it does at the back end, it uses the object assembler and creates us an object that relates to the that relates to the options and choices that we chose when we were implementing our new graphic, which can make the life of someone like an instrument technician much easier because they don't have to know object structures, they don't have to know object oriented planning, they just have to know they want to display this type of graphic with these options. So it makes it much easier. So what we're going to see next is the different types of resolution. So there are there is natural uh, navigation built in, so if you click and select something, it uh, responds as it should. There is a tablet experience and we talked about pinch and zoom earlier and the clutter and declutter of uh, screens as you zoom in and zoom out. And there is, we've discussed already, multi-touch experience. So we can do things like swiping in to different panes and multi-gesture control for uh, panes that are hidden in the side or swiping panes. So we design it once and then we can use it on any device. So let's summarize what we've talked about. So we talked about tag-based versus object-based SCADA. So we talked about graphics in tag-based solutions being developed first, but in system platform or object-based solutions being developed last. Global changes are propagated from templates in object-based solutions, and external tools are used in tag-based solutions. Standards can be strictly enforced in object-based solutions, but it's much more difficult to enforce those standards in a tag-based solution. We looked at InTouch 2017, and we talked about the different application types, classic, modern, and managed. We talked about the new functionality that's brought by Windows Frames, application templates, and the new script editor. We then looked at system platform and the clients that are involved with system platform. So we looked at InTouch for System Platform, which is the visualization for, for the applications itself. We talked about functionality being removed as it's not required, as it's done in the object servers. We talked about system platform references in place of tags to connect to the I.O. for visualization. And we looked at the new InTouch OMI client, which gives us a more simple, flexible, and expanded application type. We talked about the new profile and layout objects that make it easier for us to design our applications in multi-screen and uh, multi-layout formats. And we talked about the integration of applications such as Historian Insight and Alarm Advisor. And that's the end of the presentation. Uh, lines will be unmuted for questions and answers. Okay, no questions, so if you need or think of any questions, um, please come back to me. My email was in the first slide, so you'll be able to see it in the recording. Um, contact me if you've got any questions about the content or any questions about system platform or in touch uh, following the webinar. Thank you very much for viewing the webinar today and participating, and uh, we'll see you next time.